Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and to another video. So today I want to talk to you about Fedora Silverblue. Probably some of you already heard the name Silverblue on Fedora and today I want to look with you actually what's all about. So you can see here I pulled up actually one article on the Fedora magazine which is explaining what actually Silverblue is and then we are going to have a little deeper look in it. So Fedora Silverblue as you can see here it's of course the code name for the new generation of desktop operating system previously known as Atomic Workstation. Maybe some of you heard this name before. The operating system is delivered in images that are created by utilizing the RPM OS3 project. The main benefits of the system are speed security, atomic updates and immutability. So it means basically that the system is actually installed as an image. So think of the operating system in Silverblue like a box. You have a box of a certain size and this is the main box which contains then other boxes like applications for example. However, the box itself is immutable, except in certain cases that we're going to look afterwards. So you have basically the base system, which is immutable, and you will install applications inside this box, which are also isolated on its own. So basically the operating system is not touched. And this is, of course, is going to improve also the security and it's going to avoid also accidental damage of system files. Now, what is actually is the OS3 or the OS3. So you can see here, OS3 or libOS3 is a project that combines a Git-like model for committing and downloading bootable file system trees together with a layer to deploy them and manage the bootloader configuration. So the RPM OS3 is basically built on top of OS3 and it allows Fedora to use RPM packages as a layer on top of the image we have on the operating system. So we're going to see afterwards the use cases for that. But let's jump over here, why use Silverblue? So this is of course a very good question. Because it allows you to concentrate on your work and not on the operating system you're running. It's more robust as the updates of the system are atomic. The only thing you need to do is to restart into the new image. So basically what happens here is that when you start the system, this is at least what's happening also to me when I start the system every day, it's going to update automatically if there is an update. And this update is going to basically create its own image. Now, if there is a problem with the update, what you can do, you can just roll back to the previous image and you're going to be back in the previous operating system, basically. So you have two ways on how you can do this. You can do it from the grab boot loader if you want to temporarily boot back in an older image, or you can use the RPM OS3 rollback command to completely roll back to a previous image. We're going to look at this in a second. Now, another advantage, of course, is the possibility of an easy switch between branches. So you can easily try the Rawhide or Updates testing branch and then return back to the one that contains the current stable release. Also, you should consider Silverblue if you want to try something new and unusual. And I can definitely agree with that because when I started to test this out, I didn't know where to put my hands here and I'm going to show you why in a second. So what are the benefits of an immutable OS? So this is very important. As it says here, having the root file system mounted read-only by default increases resilience against accidental damage as well as some types of malicious attack. The primary tool to upgrade or change the root file system is RPM OS3 that we're going to look at in a second as well. Another benefit is robustness. It's nearly impossible for a regular user to get the OS to the state where it doesn't boot or doesn't work properly after accidentally or unintentionally removing some system library, what I've told you before. So how do we manage application then and packages in Silverbrew? Well, basically one word only, flat packs. You can install here in Silverblue application using Flatpaks. You can install also some other applications that are not available on Flatpaks, like for example, some system applications like KVM. You need to install them as layers and I'm going to show it to you in a second. But the base applications that you're going to install in Silverblue are Flatpaks. The advantage of course there is that it's not going to touch the base operating system and you can remove them without touching the OS. And when you will upgrade them, you will upgrade them also without touching the OS, which is always the same image. Now we have also another tool, which is the toolbox. Now the toolbox is very cool. I'm going to show you this also in a second. It's a project to make containers easily consumable for regular users. It does that by using Podman's rootless containers. Now I've done a video about Podman on Arch some months ago. And for those of you who don't know, actually Podman is the utility that Red Hat now uses to replace Docker. And if you want to have more information about Podman, you can check out the video I did about it some months ago. Now, Toolbox lets you easily and quickly create a container with a regular Fedora installation that you can play with or develop on separate from your OS. 
So this is a great thing. I'm going to show you this in a second. Of course, this is more meant probably for developers. This is a CLI tool and it's working only on the terminal. But if you want to develop some applications or you need to run some applications in containers, this is definitely something to check out. Okay, so let me close this window here. I will leave a link to this article in the video description so that you can read through it. It contains a lot of good information. Now, this, what you see here, it's Fedora Silverbrew. Actually, I installed this now on my main machine. It looks exactly like Fedora 34. And by the way, this setup here actually includes two different displays with two different DPIs. I have a 4K monitor and this, what I'm recording right now, is my 1080p monitor. And finally, I have to say it's really nice to work here with Wayland because it scales finally properly with the proper DPI both monitors. Now, I am recording also this video with Wayland and I'm using, as you can see here on top, OBS Studio. Actually, this is a release candidate of OBS Studio, which should be available very soon in the main repositories, also on Arch, by the way. And it's using actually Pipewire to record the screen, which is a great thing. I have a video coming up actually in the next month with the new Arch ISO for May 2021, where we are going to install Arch Linux with Wayland, with Pipewire, ButterFS and many other things. So stay tuned for that. Anyway, let's pull up here a terminal. So I'm going to show you here what I did when I installed Silverblue. So I had to learn also because I was new to Silverblue. I never used it before. So the first thing I did actually was the same thing I do always. I update, I try to update my system. Let me go full screen here, increase the font size. So what I did is type in sudo dnf update and then hit enter. I thought I'm going to upgrade my system here. But as you can see, it says DNF command not found because it's not going to work in Silverblue this way. So when you want to upgrade the image of the system, you're going to use the rpm os 3 and then upgrade. Now, normally when you boot up the machine, Silverblue will check for updates and install them automatically. So you will not see anything there. But if you want, you can do it manually this way with this command. And what's going to happen here, of course, is going to check if there are some updates for the packages in the image. And if so, it's going to update. And if not, it's going to do nothing like in this case, because there are no upgrades available. Now, this is the core of Fedora Silverblue. So think of the OS, like I said before, as a box of a certain size. Inside of this box, which is fixed, basically, it's unchangeable, it's immutable. You have several small boxes inside. These are your applications that you install with Flatpaks, and they are not actually related with the big box, which is the operating system. So the advantage there, of course, is that you are not tinkering with the OS. You are not touching system files and so on. And so the OS itself remains basically untouched. Now, there are some instances, for example, when you need to actually install some extra packages in the image because they are not available as flat packs. So one example of this is, for example, KVM. So if I close this window, let me pull over here KVM. You can see here, this is running. I have an installation running here of Silverblue in a virtual machine. So KVM or Virtual Machine Manager does not actually exist in Flatpaks, at least not yet. So what you need to do in that case, you need to install the package. So to do that, you will need to go to the terminal. And again, I'm going to increase the font size and you will have to install it by typing in RPM O3 and then install and then virt manager and then hit enter. Now it's going to install Virtual Manager with all the dependencies and everything else. And then Virtual Manager will be integrated in the image of the OS. So whenever there is an update, it's going to check for those as well. And the moment you install Virtual Manager in this case, you will need to reboot the machine to reboot in the new image with Virtual Manager available. So that means that you can reboot your machine, you will have your KVM up and running, but if something goes wrong with KVM or something is not running correctly after an update, you can roll back to the previous image of the OS without removing anything. Now let me close the terminal here and let me pull up actually another page that I will also leave a link to in the video description below. And this is the manual or the documentation for Fedora Silverbrew. Now, there are a couple of things that you need to be careful if you want to try Fedora Silverblue. Now, the first one is the installation. There are some limitations in the installation. So by default, actually, you should always choose the automatic partitioning on the installer, which is always the Anaconda installer. But you can still partition manually if you want to. You just have to be aware of how the partition should be. So as you can see here, as described above, there are non issues with manual partitioning on Silverblue and it should be used with caution. The following notes are intended as hints for those attempting it and it should not be treated as a recommended practice. Automatic partitioning is recommended. So with Silverblue, 
only certain mounts can be manually specified as partitions. These include the boot directory, the var directory and all subdirectories under it. So for example, if you want to have the home partition separate from the root partition, you will have to mount it under slash var slash home and not under slash home, for example, because Silverblue has a symlink from home to var home. The same goes for var log and var containers. And of course, also another recognized directory is a root file system. So you need to be aware of this if you want to install this manually. However, as it says here in the manual, you should go with automatic partitioning. Now let's go here to getting started. And as you can see here, Silverblue has different options for installing software compared with a standard Fedora workstation or other package-based Linux distribution. So this includes Flatpak apps, we talked about it, the toolbox, which I'm going to show you in a second, and then package layering. This is the one I showed you before with Virtual Manager. So the RPM Austrian tool used for host updates is a full hybrid image package system. By default, the system operates in pure image mode, but package layering is useful for things like libvirt, which is KVM, drivers, and so on. So for example, I had to install KVM with the layering system because it's not available as a flat pack and, and there might be other applications that you might need to install actually as a layer on top of the RPM O3. Now flat packs works as flat pack works. So you have already a configuration available when you install Silverblue, you have the flat pack Fedora repository already installed, but you can install of course the repository from FlatHub and you will have much more many choices to install flat packs. This is of course very simple and it's described here also in the manual. I will leave a link to it in the video description below. And we have uh, package layering, as I said before. So package layering works by modifying your Silverblue installation. As the name implies, it works by extending the packages from which Silverblue is composed. Good example of packages to be layered would be the fish shell, for example, Sway and Libweird. So KVM basically. So most but not all RPM packages provided by Fedora can be installed on Silverblue using this method. Currently using package layering creates a new deployment or bootable file system route. It does not affect your current route. This preserves rollback and the transactional model, but means that the system must be rebooted after a package has been layered. Eventually this limitation might be lifted, but generally is expected that you use package layering sparingly. So basically you install a package with layering and you will have to reboot your machine to have that available. And the reason for that is that you will have an older image available if something goes wrong with the updated one. So this is really meant in specific cases, like for example, when you're installing libvirt like I did here, but usually you should all install application using flat packs. And as you can see here, it goes on and describe how you can use the RPM OS3 command. Now updates, upgrades and rollbacks. So this is very important. RPM OS3 upgrade, this is what I showed you before. You can also upgrade between major versions by using this command here. And you can also roll back. So rolling back is a very, very handy feature of Fedora Silverblue. You can see here, Silverblue keeps a record of the previous OS version, which can be switched to instead of the latest version. While this shouldn't usually be necessary, it can be helpful if there is a problem with an update or an upgrade. Rollbacks works the same way for both, as well for deployment purposes. There are two ways to roll back to the previous version. Temporary rollbacks. To temporary rollback to a previous version, simply reboot and select the previous version from the boot menu, from grab basically. So when you reboot your machine, you will have a list of images that you can boot from. And if you want to temporarily roll back, you can just boot in one of these. And then there is a permanent rollback. To permanently switch back to the previous deployment, use the RPM OS3 rollback command. So after you enter this command, you're going to effectively roll back to the previous OS image that you have. So this is very simple actually, uh, and it makes the system very easy to maintain. So another thing that I would like to show you is actually the toolbox. Now the toolbox actually, I, I rather show it to you directly in the terminal. And let me actually minimize this window here and pull up the terminal. Now I'm going to go full screen here and increase the font size. Now the toolbox is actually a container that you can test your applications in. So let me give you an example. So for example, I want to create a toolbox for something that I want to use it might be a program for development. In this case, I'm going to keep it very simple. I want to install actually an application that I don't want to have on my main system, but I want to have it in the container because maybe I want to work on it. So let's type in toolbox create and I'm going to name the toolbox in my case software just as an example and then hit enter. 
Now you can see, for example, the toolbox container image is not yet installed in my machine. So it asks me, do you want to actually install the toolbox first? I'm going to say yes here. And then it's going to pull uh, the image from the registry and then it's going to install the container. So this is going to take maybe a couple of seconds. You can see now it's already done. So they created the container software. So in my machine now we have this container which is called software. So to enter the container, I can type in toolbox, enter, and then software, the name of the container, and then hit enter. So what happens here is that we are entering now the container. And as you can see, we have now here a different prompt. It says my name here, my username on toolbox. And we have this diamond here, which indicates that we are in a container. So what can I do here? Well, I can use actually this container as I would usually use Fedora. So for example, I can type in sudo dnf install. Remember, we cannot use dnf on Silverblue, but here we are on the container. And then I want to install, for example, NeoFetch and then hit enter. So you can see now it's checking the repositories as it would normally do in a normal Fedora installation. And once the check is done, it's going to go ahead and install NeoFetch in this container. And there you go, these are the packages I need. So I can install them very simply as I normally would do it in a Fedora workstation installation. This is gonna take a moment to install. These are not big packages. Nevertheless, I'm gonna pause the video here quickly guys and I'll be back with you in a second. So there you go, the installation is now finished. Now, what happens here? Well, let's clean up the terminal. If I type in new fetch and hit enter, you can see I have new fetch here working. So we have installed here new fetch in a container inside our Silverblue installation. Now, what happens if I type in exit? Well, I go back to my main installation. Do I have new fetch here installed? Well, let's try it out. You can see command not found because it's in the container. So if I would go back into my container where I have NeoFetch installed, I can work with NeoFetch there if I need to work on it or any other program. This was just a demo to show you how it works. Now, if you are done with that and you don't need anymore to have this container, you can type in toolbox rm-f to remove, to force remove the image and then software, which is the name of the container. And you can see we have no message in the terminal. So now if I would try to enter the container by typing toolbox enter software, you can see there is no containers found. So it's asking, do you want to create one now? I'll say no here. It's just to show you how it works. So this is the toolbox. Again, it's a container environment where you can work with applications without touching your main operating system. So every application that I installed here in Fedora Silverblue, as you can see here on the bottom, except of course the GNOME applications which are coming pre-installed. OBS, VLC, um, K Caden Live, Spotify, these are all applications that are installed with Flatpaks. Now, as you can see here, Fedora Silverbrew is based on GNOME, but word on the street is that Fedora 35 might include also a KD version of Silverblue, which you can actually try out already if you download the beta, which is, I think, on GitHub. Now, this version is going to be called probably Kinoit or Kinoit, depending on where you live. And the name comes actually to the fact that Kinoit or Kinoit is actually a blue stone, which has the color blue silver. So it's matching with silver blue. And the word key actually in Japanese meaning tree, which refers to the RPM O3 project available in Fedora silver blue. So I'm looking forward also to test out the KD version when it comes out, probably with Fedora 35, October 2021. We'll see what's all about. So if you try Silverblue out, let me know in the comments below how you like it and how it's working for you. And if you already use Silverblue, let me know why you love it so much or why you like it so much. And share your knowledge also with the community. It's always useful to know why people are using the distribution. I hope also that you liked the video, guys. If you did, please hit the thumbs up and subs to the channel. If you haven't already, subs always help me out. And if you want to support the channel, you can do so by becoming a Patreon. As you probably already know, I'm doing a live webinar on Patreon every month, once a month. We are focusing on a topic about Linux. Or if you want, you can also donate via PayPal through my website as well. Thank you so much for watching the video, guys, and I'll see you very soon in the next one.